Hello and welcome to the episode 170 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A key meeting, a discussion in the parliament and a revelation about drugs are some of the stories we'll be focusing on today. Let's start the episode with yet another night at the Top 10 Club for the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums. The night was part of the second ongoing residency of the band in Hamburg, West Germany. It was the 80th show in a row played in that venue for the lads. One year later, in 1962, the same lineup of the Beatles performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Coven Club in Liverpool. It was the 30th double feature in the venue. The evening concert featured the bill headed by the Blue Jeans, hosting, so to speak, both the Mercy Beats and the Beatles. Two events took place in 1963. In the early afternoon, at 3 pm, a young Derek Taylor met and interviewed Beatles manager Brian Epstein for the Daily Express at the NEMS offices in Liverpool. The experience started off in a less than enthusiastic fashion, with Epstein being courteous but cold. After a while, Taylor managed to break the ice and conduct a good interview with Epstein. But that was only the beginning of the story. Taylor was to become Epstein's collaborator and ghostwriter of his biography, A Cellar Full of Noise, as detailed in episode 89 of this podcast. Later on, Taylor became the Beatles' press officer and, further down the line, Apple's press officer. It all began today. On this same date, the Beatles were at the Playhouse Theatre in London to record their second appearance on BBC Radio's Easy Beat. The programme was recorded live between 8.45 and 9.45 pm. The Beatles performed Some of the Guy, A Taste of Honey, Thank You Girl and From Me to You. The show was broadcast on the 23rd of June, between 10.31 and 11.30 am. 1964. Long Tall Sally was the fifth Beatles EP to be released in UK. It was the first to contain only unreleased material. Long Tall Sally, I Call Your Name, the only Lennon-McCartney original, Slow Down and Matchbox. Meanwhile, in the House of Parliament, Charles Curran of the Conservative Party read extracts of Lennon's in his own right during a discussion about the state of education in the country. Curran noted John's feel for words and storytelling, but commented bitterly about his state of near-literacy. For good measure, whether near-illiterate or not, John Lennon was on the stage of the Sydney Stadium, in Australia, with the other three Beatles. The Fab Four performed another two shows, again to a full house of about 12,000 people in attendance for each concert. Three years down the line, in 1967, Life magazine ran an interview with Paul McCartney in which Paul admitted taking LSD. This was soon picked up by the British press and caused quite a stir, as you can imagine. From 7 pm to 1.45 am, the Beatles overdubbed lead and backing vocals, drums, piano and banjo on All You Need Is Love, after a reduction of the first day of work on the song into take 10. As explained in episode 138 of What A Fab Day, the song was to be featured on the first worldwide satellite transmission as part of the BBC offering for the show. This concludes this 170th episode of What A Fab Day. It's been a labor of love, which I hope you have enjoyed so far. If you have, please head to www.simonmas.com support to find ways in which you can show me how fab you are and help me to produce more episodes and more music-related content. Any donation is welcomed, any share to your friends on any social is beneficial, and any comment on how I can improve the show is a killer. Thank you, 
and join me tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.